oak. Посмотрел в этот ролик, сразу стало ясно, в чем там дело. Дело не в порохе, быстро или медленно горящем. Дело, конечно, в контейнере, в пластике, из которого сделан этот контейнер. Пластик надо более жесткий. Вот. Он на морозе хорошо, зимой показывает хорошие результаты. Летом плохие результаты. Передел его, сделал из жесткого пластика и рельефный сделал такой снаружи, чтобы без проблем проходил чековые сужения. Давайте посмотрим, что получилось. This last summer we tested the Amphoroff bullets with this red Sabo and it was during summer and it was hot outside but we did keep the shells on ice to try to control the conditions. Despite our efforts, the plastic used in the Sabos did prove to be rather soft and they actually stripped out even using pretty light powder loads. As a result of our test, Dimitri redesigned the Sabo using a harder, higher temperature plastic. The mild steel projectile remains the same. By the way, it weighs 23 grams or 0.81 ounces. He also sent this special wad, which we will call a spacer. It takes up some of the space that would normally have to be filled with powder, so we can test using reduced powder loads. Uh -oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> now that dart hit the guy's chest. Oh. Wow. Four, 490, that can't be right. No. Despite using the spacer, using 20 and 22 grains of long shot just did not work out. But using 30 grains, that seemed to be the magic number. And 30 grains is a full powder load. In other words, we really don't need the spacer. Now what's really interesting is the spacer never left the shell it never even moved it just stayed in place and as you can see the condition of the sabo is absolutely perfect no deformation at all fortunately dimitri also sent another version of the sabo which is just dimensionally the same as the red sabo we know that the new plastic is strong enough to handle a full powder load of 30 grains or more of long shot but we also want to push the limits trying other powders besides long shot. We'll be using tight wad and a powder called E3. Tight wad and E3 burn a lot faster than long shot. What do you think about that, Cat? Do you think they'll hold up this time? Welcome back to Outflater, folks. Officer Greg, Jeff behind the camera. We're out here today bringing you another creation by Dmitry and Dmitry and Farov in St. Petersburg, Russia. Uh, Dimitri, you've, you've someone, seen some... Someone, excuse me, someone said we we said his name wrong or something. It's Ant Farrow. Oh, Christ. I don't know. All We're right. Americans, you know. How, are we, Putin, how do we know how to say those names? Anyway, it looks like Ant Farrow. You'll read it as Ant Farrow. Um, he uh, has sent over... You've seen these projectiles before. They look like cool little bomb-shaped uh, projectiles. They look like those old, pins. those toy cap bomb things, yeah. you know? That, okay. Yeah. So... We had some mixed uh, mixed results from these before. We've put some heavy-duty sabos on these, kind of improved them. Jeff put them up. Tough new plastic, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I need. To, can I shut up? Okay, go ahead. Jeff put some ass behind him on this one, so we're gonna zip it. Both of us are gonna zip it. We're gonna fire them through smoothbore for you, and we got some fun targets downrange. Let's give them a try. All right. So the first ones we're gonna shoot are 32 grains of long shot. We've got three of these. One of them's already chambered in the old Beretta 1301. Uh, we used the uh, Yardometer 5000 and we have lasered out 17 whole yards. It's like 180 billion millimeters, <laughs> four cabbages. So um, Brandon's waiting for us to shut up and get shooting. Let's do it. On the orange triangle. Triangle. Wow, almost no recoil. <laughs> Did it go off? I don't think it went I don't, off completely. I don't think it burned up all the way. That sound, did you see, hear how hollow it sounded? Yeah, make sure the bore is clear. There's no Sabo stuck in there. So here's what we found as we walked up. Brandon. That one did not ignite completely, but. No, it, it sounded really hollow. It, there was almost no recoil, so something didn't burn behind it. But look at this thing. Despite being an underpowered shell, it stuck right here. <laughs> you can also pretty clearly judge its accuracy. 
The high speed camera didn't uh, activate for some reason. I don't know what happened there. There it is. Okay. Okay, let's do another one. Oh, that wow. One, that one had some ass. That one, that was a... <laughs> thousand feet per second. <laughs> <laughs> that was over a mile per second. <laughs> I don't think that was accurate. That oh, one, that wow. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Here we go. That one's got a good thump. Wow. Listen to that boom. Sound like a rifle round. Here we go. That one's got a good. Now, if I were to guess, I would say this projectile was going between 18 and 2,000 feet per second. Okay, so Brandon was waiting for us downrange. Originally, we had this tape set up in a little cross. Uh, the round hit just a little bit high and left of center. That's your fault. I know. Get a t-shirt high and left, right? <laughs> um, and it plunked right in there. You guys saw it on camera. It stuck right in his vest. We plucked it out. That one kind of farted out on us. Round number two hit just below that original one. That's its hole right there. It punched right through the vest. Jeez. And, <laughs> and went right through Brandon and out the back. Okay. So we got 100% pass through on that one. We're not going to go out there and find it with a metal detector <laughs> or any kind of laser or atom, uh, atom neutron something. Uh, round number three, after I moved the tape, hit just a little bit, I mean, a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch to the right. It did not go through the vest. It's somewhere in there, though. I can't find it. I was but, in here. Uh, but needless to say, <laughs> needless to say, 32 long shot. A hot load yes. worked pretty well. Yeah, it. The, we will stumble across the round. It is somewhere inside. If we this just get a, a, I think the the uh, sabos are giving us a weird sabo or a chronograph reading. Yeah, yeah. We had almost seven thousand feet per second. <laughs> I think it wasn't so quite that it was fast. Like what a mile and a half that thing went in one second. That was crazy <laughs> fast. Now we're gonna try thirty-five grains of long shot because thirty-two wasn't bad enough on the shoulder. Let's try thirty-five grains. How was the recoil? The recoil wasn't horrendous, but it was stout. Okay. Um, Downrange. I think it's going to get worse, so. <laughs> you think? Spoiler alert. We've added three more grains. Why not? Yeah. Um, Downrange. We, <laughs> we have one of the minimums downrange from the Incredibles. Um, and let's, we're going to explode that guy. Let's give it a try. All right. Right in the Cyclops eye. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Jeez. Man, that thing smacks. Using 35 grains of long shot, we had excellent stability, accuracy. Well, maybe we can blame Greg on that one. Here we go on the black, black heart, maybe. Again, with 35 grains of long shot, we don't see the most accurate projectile, but stability was still good. Well, that thing went in there deep. It actually went surprisingly deep. It scooted on, on through it, almost almost made it out the back. It was wow. trying, trying to crack its way out the back, the back crack. I wish we'd get a, 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 leg, a, a believable chronograph reading. We did, look at that. 8,600 and some odd feet per second. <laughs> Why would you need a chronograph that goes that high? <laughs> I don't know. That's a fast bullet. That is, I don't think it's anything that fast. <laughs> Anyway, I'm actually kind of surprised that lightweight projectile. That one was a little low, though. It went a little bit low. Could have been my trigger pull. It, sure. it, we'll blame something. We'll blame you. It's best, it's best to blame me. Okay. Okay, we got armored Justin Beaver in his bunker. <laughs> Even at that little dot, right? Yep. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Ring. Of all the 35 grain loads, this one was the most precise, coming very close to the point of aim. Infra medic. I thought I would punch through that. I thought I would too. Maybe it was a downward angle, but boop, hit Justin. Hit just outside of Justin's little protective cone there 
angled it down. This is what we found out on the wow. Sandy Road. Just pay, snapped it off, huh? Pay no attention to that driver's license there. <laughs> okay. Still hot. So we're back down to 20 grains of tight wad. But that's a fast powder. It's Super like it's like a pistol powder. Like 8,596 feet per second. Yeah, fast. I wish we get a corner reading, but this we're... one's 22. That one's 20. We got some pomegranates downrange. Just give them a try. Wow, it worked. Bottom one. Did it? Yeah. Okay, 22 grains tight wad. All right, I'm going for the raviolis under the tomato. Okay, gotcha. Here we go. Starting to get dark. I'm ready. Ready. He hit it. Oh, 20 grains of tight wad did quite well. While 22 may have been too much, we didn't have very good stability on this shot. Certainly can't blame Greg on this one. Still, it was impressive that he hit it at that distance. Okay, so it tore open the can and our tomato remains uninjured. The okay. spaghetti was not very exciting. Uh, I, no. thought, I thought we'd have... No. <laughs> middle note. Okay, we like try new and try new things. I think even the coyotes are going to pass on that. <laughs> It's three years old from my little... Uh, I was going to eat it, but you said it was three years old. Uh, this stuff will last for a thousand years, but it's from my, uh, I don't know what you call it, emergency storage cabinet. I just figured I'd rotate it out. Three-year-old stuff, coyotes are going to pass. Yeah, okay. Record as the world's largest OG finger wiggle. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we found this Harley Davidson tire out here. We're going to put a panel inside that will hold up the F-18 nose cone. And oh, that, you're, okay, that. that's pretty genius. I like that. What am I gonna do? Yeah, the internet. I thought you were gonna do something really ridiculous, but that, we're gonna try I like fire. that. <laughs> we're gonna see if the round will go through, hit the jug inside, maybe even go out the back. Who knows? You be the judge. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Ooh. Oh, he's only through it. Yeah, but did it go through the back? Happened. All right, so let me rotate this towards you for sunlight. As you can already tell, we busted the jug inside. So no big surprise that the round, I aimed just a little bit below this wet spot for where the jug was located. You can see where a little cross oh, yeah. there, see yeah. that? That's even where the little tail fins went through. Yeah. I didn't see that. And here's the cool thing. After it busted off the jug, <laughs> look back here. What? That is- Was that that's, already there. No, that's the exit. It's got sharp edges on it. There's, oh, okay. That's not part of an old. Okay, uh, I'm just making sure. I want to be fair. Old, it's just evidence. Because people are going to be like. Rub, 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 rub. They're also going to say, Jeff, that's not a Harley Davidson tire. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is, though. Yeah, yeah. It looks like one. <laughs> Fat boy. Fat boy. Even using 22 grains of E3 powder worked quite well in our tests. Both E3 and Tight Watt are both very energetic fast burning powders and 22 grains of either one equal approximately the same volume as 32 grains of long shot and you must fill the space behind the sabo completely with powder for it to function properly well what did you think we were a little surprised those things could handle all different powder loads all the way from what 20 grains or 30 different and, and different powders though you yeah. know you could you could load these things with almost any american e powder long shot Tight wad, yeah. Super Blaster 5000. <laughs> we, we had it all out here. It uh, it held up quite well. I'm I'm really impressed. You know, before we had to really baby these things and and, and underload them, yeah. Because the sabo was so it was just getting stripped out. The lugs were stripping it out. And you can see the pieces of sabo that Jeff found down range right there. One of the complete. We found two out of out of the all the rounds we shot today. We found two complete intact projectiles left over. So it's pretty cool. It's interesting nonetheless. Where else on the internet are you going to see Britney Spears carrying a giant baby tomato? And unfortunately, Britney and Justin both survived today. Too. Uh, we thought we were going to actually get rid of one or the other, but no, nope, they're still <laughs> with us. Anyway, we thank you guys for stopping by. We're losing sunlight and brain cells. So, uh, <laughs> we don't have much to spare. No, we didn't, have, we didn't start out with a lot. Yeah. So we thank you guys for stopping by for Pure Science here on Telflater Mouse. And... Uh, that's about it. That's all we got. That's all we got. Really. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm just blabbering now. All right. It's time to cut. See you later. Fat boy.